Well, I'm Lee. And I'm his beautiful sister, Elaine. And, and we're, we're the, the Roys. Roys. And we are very excited to be here at uh, CRS 2015. 2015. And CRS should be excited that you're here. Well, well, we hope so. We hope they are. <laughs> they let us in. So. They, yeah, they're not stopped at the door. Uh, the first thing I want to, and I'm, let's see if you agree <clears> with <throat> this. The When I listened to The View the very first time I, I listened through the whole record, mm -hmm. it felt so authentic and traditional and unspoiled. Wow. Well, Love it. Is, is that something? Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a great a, That's analogy. a great compliment. I mean, that's really what we were aiming for. You know, every time we, we do a new album, we always think of it as our last one. Because you never know in this business. Maybe he gets sick, I get sick, something happens. You just never know. So we always go in the studio with the idea of, if this was our last project, what would it be? And, you know, we, we had a collection of songs, again, that we'd wrote through personal experiences uh, or stories that we heard that we really wanted to get out to the folks. And we went in there and, and just did our thing and, and didn't try to overproduce it. Lee and I produced it up on our own. And it's this is who we are. It's who we are, you know, from start to finish, from first song to the last song. So I'm glad that uh, you gave us that wonderful compliment. That means a lot. Yeah, I came across. And one of the things that I really love is you're, you allow yourself to sound vulnerable. Like not every word is totally perfect, mm -hmm. auto-tuned yeah. to exactly where it needs to sit. And I love that because it's something that, especially in country music the last couple of years, suddenly everything had to be perfect. Yeah. Yes. And it just destroyed a lot of the soul the feeling. of what was in the music. Yeah. Well, I think I think the, <clears throat> there's a lot of truth in the old saying that emotion isn't perfect. You know, I mean, I think that yeah. there's a lot to be said about just the rawness and and uh, uh, taking a song to a place where it's a little more raw and authentic, and letting the people really feel the emotion that's that's in your voice or, or in the lyrics or. Um, you know, I think I think you're right. I think there, there, it's become a thing where everything needs to be so exactly perfect, and every millisecond of every song has to has th have something in it. Mm. And I think with this record, we left a lot of holes and a lot of openings, and let the actual lyrics be what people hear. And uh, we've this record has has given us the most. Um, uh, Best reviews that we've had so far in our career have been from this record. So yeah. the real, did it feel like validation when you saw those reviews? Yeah, like, for well, sure. You know, I don't read a lot of reviews. I try to stay away from that just to not get stuck in that box. Mm -hmm. I read a few here and there and, you know, sometimes if it's not too nice, you go, aw. <laughs> you know that because I'm so sensitive to that stuff. But um, I, I think for us it was just kind of, you know, spreading our wings and just at this point in our career, we just have to be who we are and let the music speak for itself. And we're seeing that at the shows that people come up and say that song there or this song here or that one there. So we know that it's doing something and people are hearing it and they're liking it. So for us, it's just being who we are finally and breathing and being comfortable and happy with what we're doing, how we're doing it and where we are in our career. And I think that is success in itself. Nice segue there. Um, <laughs> because as I mentioned before, I'll be spending a large part of my year talking to people about happiness and success. Mm -hmm. Where do you place the source of happiness in your work lives? Because a lot of people will say the source of happiness is my family. Of course, mm -hmm. and it should be. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Where do you place the source of happiness in your work lives? Well, we want we want to be successful at what we do i mean like any business we want it to thrive and be you know we want to be able to take it to the next level and and as she said you know uh you never know if if it's your last album uh one of the factors if you don't make enough money on this one it's hard to make another one so you know we, we want to have that comfort um i think for us the big the biggest thing happy happiness wise career wise is that if tomorrow we want to go cut an album we're going to cut exactly the album that the roys want we're not held to having to try to you know fit in with with this or that or, or mm -hmm. we just we kind of make the record that we feel that that we need to put out and i think waking up every morning feeling like there's still more to accomplish in your career for me 
is happiness because that means that I, I there's still a lot I want to do. I mean, there's still, you know, we we joke all the time, you know, we want to win a Dove Award. We want to win a Grammy. We want to win, you know, yeah. Yeah. we want to do all those things still in our career. And, and, you know, we joked about playing the Grand Ole Opry and we said, if we could just play it once, <laughs> then you play it. And now we're like, if we could just play it one more time, you know. Yeah. So I think, I think happiness wise for us is always making sure that we love the subject matter, the yeah. the format that we're doing, the songs that we're doing, and as long as we do that, I think we'll be happy in our career. I don't need, and I've said this years ago, back when we did a tried to do a country thing. I don't need the whole pie. I just want a piece yeah. of it, you yeah. know. And 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 that for us is what we still try to do. Yeah, and I think I think the happiness thing in our in our career is the music that we're making. It's the music that's in our heart and soul. And I think that's when an artist has the freedom to do that, to be who they are that's when you're going to get the best out of that artist because they're going to be happy, they're going to be more creative, they're going to be glad to share. So I think for us, we just, you know, had that come into Jesus moment and say, okay, where are we going here? You know, yeah. please, Lord, guide us, show us what are we supposed to do. And this path for us has been the most successful and for me, the most happy because I get up on stage and I'm singing the songs that I love. Yeah. And it's songs that come from our hearts. It's our little stories, but they're actually touching people, and that is worth the world to us. It really, really, really means a lot. Yeah, the the songs. You know, the thing too is like we have people all the time come up and go. You know, your song sometimes about you know Alzheimer's, mm. my grandmother, or my gran or yeah. grandpa's barn, or whatever. And at the end of the day, that's what as artist, as whether you're a poet or an author or a singer. Yeah that's what we're that's our talent that's what we're supposed to do with our music it's yeah. not about being the next number one and the next biggest selling artist and selling millions of that's great if it happens but at the end of the day the the reason that we do what we do is the gratification of someone coming up to the merch table and saying i'm buying this record because of that song <laughs> yeah just this past weekend in florida this lady came up to me and she said i have to tell you this story she said my husband played banjo and stopped playing banjo because he had cancer and he, it was painful for him to play. And he saw you on RFD TV, he saw you do, uh, he took your place and it inspired him to pick up the banjo and he played it till the day he passed away. Wow. That is what we're supposed to do as That's artists. That's why we do this. Yeah. What is it that, is it about music that it seems to be, <clears throat> that you can achieve with songs that you can't really seem to achieve with any other form of language yep. almost? I don't know. I mean, they call it the universal language. Sometimes it's a melody that'll hit that heartstring. They might not understand the words, but just the melody. Maybe it's melancholy or happy or somewhere in between. It's just, it's amazing to us. We'll go, we'll go, you know, overseas. Maybe they don't really understand what we're saying, but they're singing the words to us. It's like, it's so awesome, like, for them to take the time to do that. I just think that, I mean, it's been proven, even in Alzheimer's, how like Glenn Campbell for an example yeah, yeah. that he can still maybe not at this point because he's very ill but at the end of the disease he was still playing music and the doctors were amazed that yeah. the part of the brain that does the music part was still active and, and so it's just a healing thing I think you know God gave us this talent to it heals people it heals us too yeah. as artists you know when we go through personal things or we hear you know something from our family that, that they were going through it's a it's a therapy for us as artists and I think as the listener it's also therapy because it can help you through some really hard times and, and I'm you know proof of that and we've all been through those hard days you know so I think it's just just a healing thing for sure Awesome. I think my battery's about to die. <laughs> Let's try to get this in. If it records it, great. If not, okay. that's a great place to end. I've asked a lot of people this. <clears throat> Which songs would you put on the soundtrack to your life? Oh. Well, I think it would depend <laughs> on the day and the mood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think, you know, sort of, I yeah, think childhood, this song. For my adolescence, <laughs> yes. that song. Yeah, and I think there's, there's days, you know, there's days when I'm missing home. I'm missing mom and dad. And, yeah. You know, and then there's days where... Uh, you, I get up and I'm, I'm, I could conquer the world. I'm ready to do it, you know. And and uh, I think, uh, I think it would really depend on on the mood. I think it, it'd be hard for me to put a playlist together. <laughs> yeah. It'd be very hard. Again, you know, like like you said, missing home is is a big part of you know when you move away, you miss home. It's just, um, I don't know. It's 
No Dolly no, Parton songs no. that come to mind. <laughs> 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 I mean, every Dolly Parton song, you know, uh, you know, maybe life is love is like a butterfly. I don't know. Oh, wow. um, just you know, because that's what it's all about. At the end of at the end of our days, when we look back on our life, it's not going to be the awards that we've collected or how many records we've sold. It's going to be what we left behind as our little imprint on this world. Well, and, and you, know? you know, I think to take it a step further, I think, um, you know, I think any artist that thinks that they will always be at the top is yeah, mistaken. Never I mean, that'll never happen. You know, there's there's that handful of people that will be icons. You know, the Celine Dion's and the George Straits and the but. But at the end of the day, you know, when you when you're at the end and you're about to take that last breath and you look back on your life, there has to be more of, of who you were than what you did musically yeah. or yeah. making videos or whatever. Absolutely. There's there has to be more to your life than that. And and um, I think, you know, right now, I think happy tunes would be, you know, Pharrell's happy would be one that we would do because yeah. we're happy where we're at, you know. So I think I think uh, the playlist would be uh, ever changing I think